internationally. And secondly, uh, if you look at the monetary policy of China, mm. that is not a free market economy. Mm. So what the Chinese government is going to do to Yuan, if that has an impact on other countries, other countries may not accept it. Mm. The last question is, uh, what should RBI do according to you to sustain growth in the next six months? You see, at this point of time, the growth has just picking up. Of course, inflationary pressures are there. Can the RBI afford to raise interest rate? Mm. That's a big question mark. If it raises interest rate, that may once again have a deleterious impact, negative impact on growth. Mm. So that's the first thing. Liquidity conditions are reasonable. If it cuts down on credit, there will be a problem. If it raises CRR or something, there will be a problem. So that's the second part. Third is, there is a need, of course, to anchor inflationary expectations. Mm -hmm. Now, inflationary expectations or the inflation buildup is not because of a lax monetary policy, it's because of an increase in food prices. Mm -hmm. So the food economy needs to be managed much better mm -hmm. rather than getting into monetary measures. Mm -hmm. The country has got 53 million tons of food grains, mm -hmm. 30 million tons of wheat and 23 million tons of rice, something like that. Now, uh, if you have got that kind of food grains, you can uh, make it available in the market in a way that the prices are kept under control. Pulses, one area where we have a shortage, about 15 million tons of shortage we have. There is a need to import the pulses and make it available in the market so that the speculative prices do not go on. Uh, currently, what is happening, the price, the landed cost of, say, two of or uh, black uh, uh, chickpeas and black peas, all these things are in the range of 30 to 35 rupees. The market price, consumer price, is above 60 rupees, 70 rupees, etc. So obviously there is a huge element of speculative play in this. So if you make more available, then it will. Uh, Things will possibly get correct. Yeah. So, world over, is it real recovery in real sense or is it like an asset problem? The stock price is just. You see, currently, what has happened is the real economy has not developed. It is basically uh, the uh, financial sector where the problem is getting sorted out. If you look at the US economy, the unemployment rates have not come down. The consumption is not going up. Uh, okay, it's one good thing is that it's going up on the basis of borrowing. The savings are going up, so that's one thing. But at the same time, the GDP growth is still much less than what it used to be in order. The level of GDP is less than what it used to be in 2000. So that's another. What has happened? Yes. You have made cheap loans available. That has been taken out by the financial institutions elsewhere where returns are higher. And before the last quarter reporting of results, they brought that in using the dollar. So your balance sheet for the banks, Goldman Sachs, everybody, sorry for naming somebody, uh, are looking absolutely wonderful and not only that they have not only brought it back some of them have managed to pay back a part of the loan which they took for restructuring purposes from the government so that's the so specifically in india in india we have always been uh, we were always dependent on the real economy so that is going on the growth rate is less than what it used to be earlier uh, there is a statement by Paul Krugman, yes. which is kind of extreme, but uh, according to all exports, it will be diverted to some other planet. So, what do you find? <laughs> I'm not sure why it should be 
divert it to other planet, where from will you get the coordinates? <laughs> so, in light of Mr. Amalsa's theory that on his bench assignment, he said that uh, GDP is not a true reflector of an economy. In light of his comments, I would like to ask what is the impact of a GDP at the micro level, micro economic level? You see, GDP is an indicator of income at the end of the day, of the overall income of the country. You may say that GDP has gone up, but bulk of the GDP is in the hands of top 10%, percent rest of the guys are not, not anything. So does it mean that? So you look at the income distribution criteria. Uh, the Lorentz ratio in this country is much lower than many other countries, including Brazil, including UK, uh, not UK, Brazil, US, uh, Argentina, all these countries have much higher Lorentz ratio, which is a measure. You know what is Gini coefficient? Gini coefficient. Yeah, the Gini coefficient is. So that way, uh, our position is not too bad. Then there are other things, availability of drinking water, safe drinking water, medical facilities. Education, all the millennium goals, there are 15 of them. What has been the performance of this country? You can measure it by that. But GDP at the end of the day is an indicator of the purchasing power, it will always be there, but it may not be the sole indicator. Uh, for some, it may not be the best indicator of welfare, that sort of So, uh, the unemployment rate of the US is maintained at 10%, I mean, it's still not coming down. Though the government is taking a lot of stress for tax. Uh, credits providing to the companies for provide uh, I mean to for e for every employment. Why the employment is not coming down? Yeah, unemployment. Yeah. Is not coming down. <laughs> the rate is not coming down. Yeah, unemployment. Firstly, the real economy has to recover. The real economy has not started recovering in the US. Manufacturing has to start. Some of the services sector, some of the high technology sector have to start employing people. So then and only then uh, they will pick up. Now the point is that uh, financial sector is not doing too well, was not doing too well. Now they have of course started restructuring and paying back some of the money, etc., etc. But there is this inherent urge to cut costs. The more you cut costs, more jobs will have to be outsourced. Okay, which we don't say it loudly. <laughs> <laughs> Jobs get outsourced. You can see all the IT companies have started recruiting once again. Mm -hmm. Whether it's Infosys, TCS, Wipro, everybody has started recruiting. Where from? They have got the business. It's all done. And they, what will happen to their guys? Obviously, they will not be getting any job if they keep the price high. So, labor market adjustment is taking place. In this round, we are the winners. In the next round, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> so, how has the Tata's done as a single market in this period? Uh, okay. You see, uh, so far as the domestic business is concerned, most of the large companies have done well, the financials are available, the product loss accounts you have must have seen. So, that's not a problem. Uh, there were two major uh, sort of what do we call uh, acquisitions? One was Chorus, uh, the other was Jaguar uh, Land. Now, after the decisions were taken, the, all the market stand, and it was a leverage sort of a thing decision. So, uh, debt was quite high, and some of the banks which had given debt and were supposed to roll it over, just did not exist. <laughs> One is ABN Ambro, which got taken over by RPS. Now, ABN Ambro has one kind of philosophy. RPS is largely uh, a UK-focused local bank, which is now trying to grow internationally, etc. They have got another kind of philosophy. So what do you do? One thing, if you were one of those lesser models, you would have given up at that stage. <laughs> okay. But we have managed to get all the loans refinanced. And the business is on. Business is on, it's going on. Now the question is that why do you go for it? The reason today for Indian industry, one of the major things for Indian industry is 
that we need to acquire technology very quickly and global scale very quickly if you want to be a global player. So it depends on your ambition. Today, if you the kind of technology which is available in say superior grade steel or titanium based products, etc., to develop that, you may take another 15, 20 years. Here it's coming to you from a company, from their R and The real value, strategic value is in the technology. Who will give you that technology? Earlier we used to have these foreign collaborations, etc. They used to give us second rate technology. Now you have the ambition and the ability to gather funds. So you must go ahead for that. The same is in automobile sector. Who will give you the technology of which is of Jaguar and Rover type? Because to develop that you will need it. And not only that, it is also giving you an entry in other markets, which you would have taken in 10, 15 years to build up. So it is giving you scale. Now all that has got a value. One thing uh, the other day Mr. Tata was interviewed, he said that look, when you want to buy a house, even if the price is a little more, you go ahead with it because you need it. Okay. Now having taken it, it has got a different kind of a value. Sir, AIG is being uh, repeatedly bailed uh, out by US government. So what is the impact of AIG tie-up with Tata? You see, uh, so far as AIG is concerned, there's a very large American insurance company. They wanted to operate in India. They wanted a full operator. So they came to us and the business started. Now, that, which is not one of our very mainstream sort of an activity. In fact, we can possibly be in insurance ourselves. Yes. So, uh, this is not like what Tata Steel has done with Corus or uh, Jaguar Land or what Tata Motors have done. Yeah, I think Tata is one of the many collaborations that we had. Earlier we had one with IBM, then IBM was asked to go out and which has become Tata LXC and things like that. So, this, this is one of the many collaborations that you have. So if tomorrow Tata AIG is no more in existence, uh, AIG is no more in existence, so Tata will, will not be affected. Tata's insurance business will still be. AIG will, uh, the question of AIG not existing will not rise because it is one of the largest American insurance companies. The government, if it doesn't exist, then all the insurance it has done uh, will go for a toss, and the American economy like, will be like a lemon brother. The other thing right now, AIG is a 100% national yeah, national. Yeah, national. Yeah, national. Yeah, national. Yeah, national. Yeah, it's owned by the government of the US. If they will be uh, asked to leave India, maybe they can be asked to leave India. No, no, no. 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 That is not an issue. Anything else? Okay, let me take one last question. Okay, or two last questions. One more See that, I was. There are, I think, two other, you asked a lot of questions, but if somebody else can want to do that. Yeah. yeah. So, as you yeah. said, till 2011, we have to be very cautious. In what sense, we have to be very cautious? So what what you we have been saying is that life is not going to be bed of roses. The growth rate is going to really stabilize and pick up the pace. will start going up in 2011. So, when you think in terms of jobs, when you think in terms of that's the first thing possibly affecting you, <laughs> when you think in terms of your salary, everything. After 2011, you have to go a little slow possibly and all these things. Now I am not a pessimist guy, I am uh, by nature very optimistic, maybe it will happen earlier, but till 2011 the picture doesn't look very bright. But things have started picking up as you can see all around. I didn't say about the, yeah, I, we talked about you people. I, <laughs> of course, if the economy goes that way, it will also get. I think Nitin wants to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
no, 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 no,